Going into the 2021 college football season, this player was expected to become a superstar, a first round pick, and someone who could become the next Kyle Pitts. Yeah, that might be a little bit of a stretch, but going into this year, Jaleel Billingsley was supposed to be the next big thing for Alabama. I kept reading all of this hype, and honestly, I bought into it. Unfortunately, he got passed up on the depth chart, was in Nick Saban's doghouse, and did not live up to the hype that he had. In today's video, I want to introduce you to who Jaleel Billingsley is, what went wrong for him at Alabama, and what is going to happen to him next now that he has found a new school. But before we can get into today's video, nearly 80% of you guys are not subscribed, and we are on the road to 100k, so quickly be sure to hit that subscribe button, smash that like button for the algorithm, and turn on post notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now, let's get started and talk about what happened to Jaleel Billingsley. So, in order to understand what went wrong for Jaleel Billingsley, we need to go back in time. Athletics always ran in this family, as his uncle was actually one of the best basketball players in Tulane's history. The family eventually settled into Chicago, Illinois, and he took a liking to sports like everyone else in the family did. His talent was on full display from a very young age, as he played for the Naperville Patriots, which was a youth team located in the area, and he even won a national championship with them. At the time, he played defensive end and quarterback, and apparently, he had a rocket for an arm. He was praised by his head coach. He said, quote, He's the ultimate example for any young player and any young person to be a team player. He just showed up for work every day and worked and worked and worked. I've coached for 13 years, probably over 500 kids. He's in the top 10 for work ethic. When we hear about what happened to Alabama, this seems a little bit crazy, but back in the day, he was a workhorse. He'd always been seen as one of those kids with unlimited potential, and NFL scouts have been saying the same exact thing about him in college. His coach also said, as a youth football coach, you see kids who reach their peak in sixth grade. He was just the opposite. But he didn't always love football. In fact, as I said earlier, he came from a basketball family, and he apparently cried for over three weeks when he first started playing because he didn't like the sport. That would change though. He started to blow up early on in high school and would transfer to Phillips Academy, and he had this to say about his own game and potential. He said he could be a good leader on and off the field, and he believed his work ethic is a very strong part of his play. He must be known as a versatile tight end who could put his hand in the dirt and also block and be in the slot. At the end of the day, it was the game that he loved to play, and he was extremely passionate about it. Jaleel would check every box according to his coach and went on to produce on the field. He would catch 31 passes for 431 yards and 7 touchdowns as a junior in 2017 for Phillips. The team would also go on to win the Class 5A state championship. When it came time to recruit, Jaleel could go anywhere in the country. He initially released a top 7 schools, which included Florida, Illinois, Michigan, Ole Miss, Ohio State, Penn State, and TCU. The Illini were kind of the early favorites and there was no Alabama on that list. Then, the Crimson Tide would go full throttle on him, and the home state school would get spurned. He canceled his visit to Champaign and went down to Tuscaloosa, where he found out about the great tradition of the Tide, their great facilities, and the opportunities that could get him to the next level. They became the leader in his recruitment, but would he end up going there? Well, he would lean on his family to help make the decision, but the most important family member he had wasn't even around. Unfortunately, his grandmother had passed away when he was only 16 years old, and this was devastating for him. He eventually did choose Alabama in a commitment video, and chose them over 23 other offers, including Auburn, Florida, LSU, Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State. In his commitment video, he actually laid tribute to his grandma, as he said, quote, At the age of 16, I lost you, my best friend. I honor you every day. I honor you every play and every rep. I honor your memory because you always told me that I'd do something great. You never once doubted me. You always kept my spirits up, and this one is for you, Grandma. She was a huge influence in this decision. And fun fact, his grandmother was actually from Selma, Alabama, so that may have also convinced him to go down there. When he committed to the Tide, he made history. It had been since 1997 that an Illinois high school football player had gone to Alabama, so this was a huge deal. A Midwest recruiter for Rivals said, quote, Alabama has recruited the Chicago area before. They just haven't gotten kids out of there. But they're only going to come up there for big time talent, and that is what Jaleel is. He's a hybrid tight end, and I think Alabama sees him as an OJ Howard type player. You don't want him to put his hand in the dirt every single play and block, but he does have the ability to hold his own there. He was extremely talented and helped lead the Phillips Academy deep into the playoffs and had a monster game when they were facing elimination. His high school coach said, quote, It'd be hard for us to find a better football player in the state than Jaleel. He's been big time all year and was big time today in crunch time. Not only did he produce, but he was also a freak athlete. 
He posted a 40-yard dash time of 4.64 seconds, achieved a 33.5-inch vertical, and his 20-second shuttle time was only 4.48 seconds. He was going to translate, and scouts also knew it. According to 24-7 Sports, Jaleel was a four-star recruit, the number 11 tight end, and the 308th best player in the class of 2019. So, how would he end up doing at Alabama? Let's take a look. All right, so going into Alabama, he would decide to redshirt, and in his first year, he only caught two passes for 16 yards. I mean, there was no reason for him to play, as they already had plenty of guys at the position. 2020 would be his opportunity to break out. At the time, guys such as Carl Tucker, Miller Forrestal, Major Tennyson, and Cameron Latu were all ahead of him, but he'd end up breaking out when Jalen Waddell got hurt. In 2020, he'd end up appearing in six games. He'd end up appearing in seven games. He had three catches for 78 yards against Kentucky, caught his first career touchdown in a win over number 22 Auburn, and had four catches for 68 yards in a road win over LSU, grabbing a score in the process. In the SEC Championship game, he'd have a role as he caught two passes, and he'd help the Crimson Tide have an undefeated regular season, where they would now have a berth into the college football playoff. Against Notre Dame, he would catch four passes for 39 yards and one touchdown, as they helped knock off the number four Fighting Irish, 31-24. They'd go to the National Championship game, or against number three Ohio State, Billingsley would catch two passes for 27 yards, but the Tide had plenty of star power as they beat the Buckeyes 52-24 and won another national title. Billingsley had had a breakout year, and all the flash and potential was there for a great 2021 season. For example, Jalen Waddell and Devontae Smith were gone, so both him and John Mechie were expected to be the two big guys. One person that was brought in was a dude by the name of Jamison Williams, and while people thought he could be alright, I don't think anyone expected him to become a Bolitnikoff finalist. Instead, Billingsley would become the worst one of the three. In 2021, he would end up appearing in nine games as he caught 16 passes for 244 yards and three touchdowns. All three of those touchdowns came in the first six games, and really the only good game he had was against Southern Miss, where he had a career-high five catches for 105 yards and one score. So you may be asking, why did he not play? Well, it looks like there's about three reasons. One, Cameron Latu emerged and broke out. He became one of the top pass catchers for Bryce Young, and now Latu has made himself the top tight end prospect on the team. The second one was when he got opportunities, he really wasn't that good. And third one is the main reason, and that is his immaturity and apparently some off-the-field problems. This came to light early in the season when Nick Saban had this to say to the media. Quote, he knows what he is supposed to do in practice. He knows what he is supposed to do. This is not a democracy. Everybody doesn't get to do what they want to do. Everybody doesn't get to do what they feel like doing. You've got to buy in, and you've got to do what you're supposed to do to be a part of the team and do the things you need to do in practice every day. I don't know many times when Nick Saban's come out to the media like this, so Jaleel must have really been in this doghouse. That, combined with the emergence of Latu, basically led to Billingsley having to leave the program. Not only did he throw away all his draft stock because of this, but he would have to find a new school. So, where would he go? Well, he reunited with his former offensive coordinator who helped him have his best year, Steve Sarkeesian. Texas has become a hot name on the recruiting trail as of late, but when Billingsley entered the portal, he immediately wanted him, and Billingsley wanted to go back to him. He committed there, and will likely be the number one tight end option immediately, and I'm really curious to see if he's going to save his career. Unfortunately, to get views on YouTube, you have to make negative titles and negative thumbnails, but honestly, Billingsley is one of my favorite players. I really like him moving forwards, and he's someone I'm going to be rooting for really hardly this upcoming year. What do you guys think, though? If you're an Alabama fan, what went wrong for Billingsley at Alabama? If you're a Texas fan, how do you think he will do in the offense? And if you're a fan of any other school, let me know what player I could take a look at in my next What Happened To video. Before you go, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.